As you remove obstacles, typically the athlete standing in front of you has a good chance of being able to create it. Great job. All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Uh, a little bit of a different video today. I'm gonna be getting a lesson from, you guys have probably seen it in the title, Cameron McCormick. Uh, if you guys don't know who Cameron McCormick is, you might know who Jordan Spieth is. And Cameron McCormick has been Jordan Spieth's longtime coach for, I mean, I think ever since he was like a kid. But, I mean, he teaches a few other uh, guys that you guys might recognize. Austin Smotherman, he's on the PJ Tour as well. Daniel Berger, I think he's been a kind of a recent pickup for him. But I'm gonna go check him out. I don't know, I've just been kind of struggling with my double crosses lately and uh, I mean I figured a little bit out in Dubai, you guys will see that content coming out on, on Good Goods channel. I don't know, I've just been hitting the ball on the toe a little bit too often, getting the ball to draw and turn over to the left too often and it's just, it's just really annoying and I just want to have some sort of sense of direction and trying to get my swing back on track and getting those little fades more consistently and uh, I'm going to go see Cameron McCormick today and bring you guys along for this lesson. So talk me through your thoughts on what I'd sent you when you were overseas. Uh, that, I mean, what you said was exactly what I saw myself In terms too. of observations? Yeah, uh, visually, I yeah, I saw what you saw. I just, I've tried different angles to attack those mm -hmm. problems. I just mm -hmm. wasn't sure what's kind Take of the way to do it. Take me through the most recent? So, I actually, while well, I was struggling, when I was texting you, I was really struggling. And then I kind of found a little something when I was down there in Dubai. Mm -hmm. I had a little bit of a pause at the top. I guess not really that long of a pause, but a little bit of a pause just to kind of like feel the club being vertical at the top yep. and then just letting it kind of fall down mm -hmm. like I was uh, in the swings in China. Yeah. Uh, but the bigger difference was actually earlier than that. The bigger difference was the, the depth, rotation yes. that created the depth through the middle of the backswing. Yes. And then the addition of only five to seven degrees of forearm rotation that pitched the vertical plane that much shorter. It was right. that much flatter. Right. right? So, so it wasn't as vertical. Correct. Back then, yes. Yeah. Yes, so I remember looking at that. Different, right? Yeah, and so which, you didn't have necessarily the change of direction shaft pitch. Yeah. What you had is you established that shaft pitch, that delivery functional plane. Yeah. Through the backswing. Right, golf bag. Just getting loosened up. Oh, benefit of the doubt. That's a warm up rep. I haven't hit a single fade yet. I guess the wind is off the right, but still. Yeah, into off the right, it's probably a one o'clock wind, maybe yeah. a one thirty wind. There we go. Better. Cool. Two off the grass. Joining me out here, just a couple of steps. All right, it's all I need to see. Sometimes players react. To the wind. The yeah, yeah. They, they react dramatically different when they can actually feel the wind on right. them. The good thing is you reacted the same. I'll take that pitching wedge, I'll clean it off, and I'll okay. swap with you. And you reacted with the same pattern that has you here in front of me, a pattern that says, mm, I see what's different in my golf swing, but I don't know how to solve it. Yeah, and yeah. that's an okay place to be. Yeah. That just means you need the right inputs to get the right output. Yeah. And so we'll get there after several through the bag, because what I want to assess here is how different or similar it is all the way up the bag. Okay. I do have a question for you, and that question is, is if you had one, two, or three wishes, and I've had a magic wand, I said, bring, what wishes could I grant you today? I just want a consistent, like, pull fade back. Yeah, and that's the flight you played when you are in China. Yeah, that's where I the feel flight you played when you like, had your most success. I don't have to, like, aim left to start the fade. Like, I can aim pretty much, like, about where I want it to end up, mm -hmm. and, and I know it's going to pull left and I'll right. fade back. Got it. That's one wish. I can grant that. And no double crosses. <laughs> is that toad? Is it the first one toad? Slightly. Let me see what slightly means. Yeah, slightly. Holy lefties. The mechanic certainly needs to be able to see the problem, uh, that's, that's exactly, I was hoping I wasn't going to hit it good in front of you, because sure. then I'm like, why am I even here? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's a big jump from 600 driver if you're not willing to make it, then no, you can no. certainly hit something longer. I'm used to it. Sweet. When you guys film your stuff for good, good, how much warm up time do you typically take? I wish we got like longer. Three swings? Well, yeah. yeah, if that. Yeah. If that. <laughs> I can appreciate that. Strike was where that time? Uh, high heel. Let's get to solutions. 
You ready? There's two things we're gonna do, and then we're gonna see how the dust settles on them. As you remove obstacles to creating the flight that you want, right. typically the athlete standing in front of you has a good chance of just being, being able to create it. Right. I don't anticipate needing to do anything other than the following two things, okay. but if we do, then I'll say that I reserve the right to add something to that, yeah. and I expect that with your history, college golf, professional golf, you have the talent to be able to tap your head and rub your stomach, meaning do multiple things at once, okay. like juggle three balls, to see the results that you're looking for. Yep. So those two things are this. When you start your golf swing, I'm okay with some amount of lateral motion off the ball. Okay. But what I wanna see is a reduction in the lateral mm -hmm. and an increase in the rotation. So okay. right shoulder back. Okay. So a bigger portion of the start of your swing is right shoulder drawing back. Okay. If you need to add a, add a bit of hip rotation, I'm also okay with that. Right. Less lateral right before the rotation kicks in. Okay, okay? gotcha. Second piece, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, take your stance, I'll take you through that. Right shoulder back, beautiful. Then, I want you to try and roll your forearms an excessive amount, okay? At least what feels like an excessive amount, such that the butt of the club begins to point at, that, at that crate, exactly. Okay. And feel free to overdo it. Okay. Feel free to get too much rotation and too much roll to the club head. Okay. Okay, you ready for an even bigger challenge? The best players I've ever been around can take words and feelings and put them into action immediately. Yeah. So we're gonna see how good All you right. are. <laughs> oh, good start. Okay, time out. Let's yeah. assess success. Okay. And let's read and react to that from here. We've got an overlay of eight iron on top of eight iron, face on a down target line. Now one of these should have less lateral right Okay, we see the emergence of it here, less lateral right. One of these should have more rotation such that when we get to first parallel, we're gonna look at this frame here. Yeah. We're less outside our hand path, we're more on our hand path. Copy? Yeah. That's just you rotating. You can see it right here. Yeah, right shoulder Right shoulder is withdrawn back behind like it's trying to chase back yeah. and hide itself behind your head relative to this face on camera. Yeah. So that's enough. It doesn't need to be any more than that, but I would like less lateral right okay. as you do this. Then we said the second piece is emerging over this side. Mm -hmm. It's allow the forearms to roll such that the position of the shaft, I don't know why it didn't allow me to draw on that one, is less pitch steep. Yeah. Because that's the biggest difference in your golf swing, or these two facets are the biggest difference in your golf swing from PGA Tour China days yeah. to now. And this is what leaves you hitting off the toe, not swinging far enough left to where you can hold that face to path open for a pull fade like you like to play. And so in one swing, you've moved closer to your former self. So what I'd like to be or have happen different at an increased rate, and it may mean all it is is an increased effort to achieve this, mm -hmm. is even slightly flatter shaft pitch okay. with slightly more centered rotation, so rather than kicking so far to the right. I've and always some had of a little bit of And it. some of it's good. Some yeah. of it's good because it's like the baseball pitch that builds up energy over the trail leg and then really fires down the mound, right? Yeah. But you get to a point when you shift so far to the right that you lose leverage to push the other way, mm. and that's you. So now we're down here okay. with our vision and correlate that to the amount of shift of, let's say, the center of mass. So center of pressure okay. starts in the middle of your stance. Okay. And now to first parallel, what amount of shift in the middle of your hat has happened? It's probably three inches, and that three inches shift has moved your center of pressure all the way right to the foot. inside of your right foot. So inside of the right foot is still a point of leverage. As long as the knee is still inside the foot, as long as the hip is inside the knee, we can move mass, but still not lose the ability to push, push off. off. Okay. Watch what happens. Do you continue? Oh yeah. So you've added another half inch to possibly even inch of shift. Essentially what you have is you have an upper center and a lower center, right? Yeah. yeah. And so this is more indicative of what's happening through the stability of your lower body. But when I get my upper body so far outside my lower body, mm -hmm. what I lose is that ability to really push off hard. We want this, what's called a moment arm. We wanna keep our upper center inside our lower center such that almost, if I just lift my foot, yeah. I'm tipping in this Fall direction, right. just falling over to the left. So how much of this do you wanna trim out? We wanna trim out about two inches of shift to the right. Gotcha. As we're rotating okay. and as we're rolling that club. Initially what I have concerns about with getting my shaft flatter at the, mm -hmm. on the backswing, 
I know it's not impossible, but it feels, to me, it feels like it's easier to shallow it out at the top if it's getting up there vertically. Because mm -hmm. then I feel obviously a, a bigger difference between center of mass being above my hands and then center of mass being, being behind, behind my hands. Sure. Yeah. If you can demonstrate that, then I'm willing to run down that rabbit hole. Yeah. It's just a different way to line things up that right. does require an extra move yeah. versus how you used to swing it. So I'm looking at this precedent, this right. template yeah. you sent to me, hey, I'd like to get back to this. Mm. When you were swinging formally, you didn't, ha you didn't need an extra move out of the top, whether that move was external rotation, the trail shoulder, or yeah. it was some movement of the forearm to roll the club to the right to line things up. Okay. Net, net, you and I are on the same page. Mm -hmm. You are not lined up at all, mm. right? You're steep in the backswing. Yeah. You're sustained steep in the downswing. You've shifted too far to the right, which yes. leaves you susceptible to hit high and high left, mm -hmm. right? So how we get to the end product, which is a club path that's more left and a mm. face to path that's more open, right. is the subject of conversation. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking at precedent and saying, let's go back and do that. Do okay. you have the physical ability to do that? Mm -hmm. It looks like absolutely. You just demonstrated that in one swing. But if you want to explore a different way to go about that, it would require a move in two tenths of a second, right? right. So the back swing is about eight tenths of a second. Yeah. If we can prep it differently, if we can make the um, degree of difficulty of the dive easier in the backswing. Yeah. I'd much prefer to do that. That's my you. logic. I hear you. All right, cool. I hear you. Okay, so I'm going to be your obstruction now. You've okay. got to do two things in the backswing. What are they? Roll my forearms Good. and just rotate the right, right shoulder back. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. Excellent. Okay, go ahead and strike it. Nice job. Strike man behind us tells us if you had the ingredients for a pull fade. This is the closest club path you've given us in. 19 shots to a left club path, to a fade club path. Right shoulder back, flat. Great job. Centered head, a little bit more. Lovely job. The, the rotating of my forearms also is gonna get face a little bit more open on the it, backswing as well? It certainly can. Okay. It certainly can. They can exist mutually exclusive of one yeah. another. Meaning I can, and it's most evident, probably with a lofted club, I can roll, now watch the club head, right? And I can flatten, but I can create extension and flexion to my wrists yeah. to make the face look differently. We just need to add um, any permutation or combination of sensations that allow that ball to cut, right? Okay. Take a look. Okay, so you already see a difference, which would then reflect well on staying more inside your foot plate, right? Not mm -hmm. shifting your upper body so far to the right. Just as a good reference point, the center of the Good Good logo. Mm -hmm. Let's play it to first parallel. Let's toss one on top of the other. Let's move them to where one is dead on top of the other. So down target line, that addition of rotation yeah. positions the club head differently. You see the right shoulder yeah. and you see the head massively different, yes? Big difference there, yeah. Okay. Let's pull them out side by side, and let's take it up to the top. And through the middle, you'll see a massive difference in that shaft pitch. Right? Oh yeah, a big difference in if the angle. We, yeah, if we were measuring this, we might measure a change in the internal external of the trail shoulder, but principally we're gonna measure a lot of difference, maybe seven to 10 degrees, just in the way your forearms are rolling to allow that plane to emerge. Nine degrees, yeah, so slightly more than the seven that I predicted. Pretty significant difference yeah. though. Yeah, massive difference, massive difference. And now things are lined up differently coming down. Yeah. Now we got to turn that into slightly more left swing direction, like in the negative four, four and a half range, to create a little bit more left path. Minus 4.5 swing direction, yielding a club path of minus four tenths. Okay. Is that good? It's getting my club path left. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's good, therefore. Yep. Fantastic. There's a cut shot. Yeah. Didn't read it that way. That's where I begin to call poo-poo on technology sometimes, because yeah, you yeah. felt fade, I saw fade, yeah. I saw it launch left of target, and Trackman yeah. says, mm, yeah. I don't think so. Mm. Not enough, huh? No. Yeah, good call. Well done, sir. What you just demonstrated is one of those unique qualities that only comes through thousands upon thousands of hours of practice. But you can tell the difference between that not quite point. enough rotation yeah. and not quite enough shaft pitch. Yeah. And it's probably only a difference of two degrees. Anyone that doesn't have that inventory of like hours upon hours of practice right. has no chance. It just feels easier to fade now with Definitely. these swings. Yeah, good, good, good.
And another cut. Slightly toey. That's awesome. Awesome again. Is that starting to tip over to being laid off at the top or? Not? I'm about to show you. The answer is no, but I'm about to show you. And that brings to mind another conversation subject, which is where some is good, more is not necessarily better, 100%, is it? Yeah. You have the potential, any player has the potential of doing too much too or much, something. Yes. And so then what is the mechanism that we use as feedback that guides how much of something to use? It's our video camera. Yeah. Right? And so you're yeah. very good at that. Uh, but you asked a specific question, and here's the result. So we had some amount of trim out desired in the shift of our upper body mass. We had some amount of early rotation that would position that club head yeah. in line with the handle. When we get to middle of backswing, we would expect to see that hand path in line with your right bicep, your trail bicep, that's nice. Yep. And then some amount of shaft roll that would then point the shaft roughly at the golf ball. Yep. And then your specific question was, am I doing it so much that I'm beginning to lay it off? No, you're just carrying that shaft pitch up beautifully to the top. Yeah. This is probably a little bit excessive over here, but it's probably two inches less than what you were doing. And yeah, so I can so get behind that, knowing that that's part of your history, right? And then what it looks like on the downswing, a point of emphasis or evaluation is, if this is the hand path traveling down, middle of grip, yeah? yeah. Middle of grip, middle of grip. Then what's the associated travel of the club head that would then predict the left swing direction? It had better be on or above that. And you see it start to get cross over and start to pitch outside that right here yeah yeah that's awesome it's this shot right here that's your 3.2 degree swing direction i actually think it was more than that because it was a cut shot how do we get good at something we do it Just keep on doing it over, over and over and over again not enough not quite yeah yep. better but not as much as the one prior rotation center flat Excellent, despite the thin contact. There's one thing that I'm, I wanna be cautious of. Watch this, or let me ask you a question. At what point in time should you begin to feel the forearm roll that flattens the shaft? Should it be immediately, or should it be through the middle? It's I'm thinking of it immediately so that I see the effects in the middle of the swing. Okay, got it, yeah. And that's one of those, evaluate not what the rehearsal looks like, but evaluate the outcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I do get that. And so the caution that I would give you here is just watch that when you kick this in, it doesn't actually emerge as happening yeah, super no, soon, right? Yeah, Yeah, so it's rotation to this piece, not yeah. shifting too far to the right, and then it's kick in. Yeah. Some of that feel. Okay. Enough. Good job. Just toe on that one, but yeah. felt the rotation on it. Let's solve the rest of the toe contact. On the front end of this, I, say, I said I want to try things in a kind of a sequential manner. Less is always better than more, but sometimes more is necessary. I thought that the more we rotate, flatten the pitch while staying centered, we solve swing direction, which we have, and we solve contact location. But there's a secondary effector of your contact location shown on screen right now. Okay. This little right angle yeah. was the top of your head and the front of the apex of your cap. Yeah. I'm at the top of my swing and I fall back into right. my heel. Right. Causes a lot of that. That's the secondary Total. effector. So the primary effector would be the steep of the vertical plane, okay. I'm gonna get some toe contact. And then if I'm falling back away from the golf ball sitting in the ground, I'm gonna get some of that contact too. Gotcha. Okay, so take stance, here's how we change that. So give me the backswing. Now make the downswing, pushing into my hand. So that should keep your balance a little bit more over your left toe box, yep. head on the wall, and should help you land the club center. So give it a shot. Neck, huh? Yeah. Yeah, good job. Much more stable. Minus four on the swing direction, plenty. That's a cut, Definitely minus four. Drawing. What'd you say? Definitely not drawing. No. Uh, I lean 
back on that one. What's your head on the down the line video? Oh yeah. And you might remember on the video comparison that I sent you, I yeah. was talking about that body shift in terms of like the vertical plane, the swing, sorry, the shoulder plane's working on. You can see how that's changing. The yes. more you have better control of where your head's landing back at impact. That's yeah. good. Yeah. At the very top of my swing, my shoulder angle like steepens mm -hmm. in, in transition. It's a whole lot better than shallowing or flattening. Yeah. Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Way. Because I feel like that's contributing to my struggle to shallow the club out because it's, it's tilting me over this way. It certainly would. But when you're looking, as long as we position that shaft uh -huh. in a more functional place, we've cut out some of the degree of difficulty. We don't need this adjustment. Right. Then it doesn't matter what this does because it won't have that influence. And we'll, we'll check that it's not having an influence on quote unquote steepening. Nice job. Is that toad? Seems pretty centered. Okay. Give me the backswing all the way up. Push into my hand on the downswing. Feel like you're exiting left. Good. Nice. Same again, that was a minus 4.7 yielding a club path with minus 6 tenths. Push into my hand, exit left. Let this go as well, let this go as well. Mm. This is getting pretty good. You're getting real good at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Push into my hand, exit left, let it go. Trying to. Kind of lean back on that one. Mm -hmm. When you say lean back, you mean drifted yeah. with your body? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're doing amazing with the amount that I'm asking you to do. And the amount that I'm asking you to do is necessary based on the amount that you are different than where you need to be, right? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Real nice. It's the dog. The dog. Okay, same inputs. Average, watch this, watch this, watch this. Grade yourself. Here we go, we're starting it back. Some amount of shift to the right's totally fine. There already be more rotation. That was nice, now watch this. Did you roll it right? The answer is no. Got a little vertical there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. See that body shift? Back, 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 oh, back. Yeah. And that's where your 13 millimeters of toe contact come from. So based on that, this next shot needs to improve in two ways, softly in two ways, exactly flatter yep. and rotate more on the wall. Yep. Slightly flatter, needs to be more. Okay. On the wall, on the wall. Yeah, that was better on the wall, which is why it was more centered, right? Yeah. Yeah, nice job. Can Play you show me a driver from back in the day down Tiger Line? Yeah, yeah. Again, it's got to be from back in the day, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's wait. Back in the good old days. Mm -hmm. Did you send it by text? Yeah. Cool. I'd keep pushing to go flatter, flatter, flatter in this vertical plane. Okay. And that's not hand path, that's just shaft plane. Like, if you look at that pitch shape, it's probably four inches inside the golf ball. There's a touch change of direction, which is a beautiful thing. Yeah, I'd keep pushing to simplify it. I'd keep pushing to flatten out that shaft pitch. But it's good to know that even back in the day, there was a transition from slightly steep inside the ball to on the ball, right? Yeah, yeah. So it kind of speaks to what you were describing earlier, that there's some sensation that I'm missing in transition that would right. be also nice to have. So show me on this swing, here's the challenge. I want to see it as flat as you can make it through the middle in, that, in those forearms. Okay. Great job. Big toe hit. <laughs> Take a look. That's where you were before. Now yeah. my head's in the way. Yeah, yeah. But it felt like super laid off to you, didn't it? Oh, that was this current swing? It's the current swing. Yeah, which oh, is wow. the one I'm crouching on. I'm, I'm yeah, in the way. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah that's that transition. Felt like it was way laid off. Yeah, right. Do it again. No, I won't be in the way this time. Nice job. Nice job. The, uh, the hand path kind of curling upwards at the top of the swing, is that, mm -hmm. you don't see a big deal in that? No. Okay. I mean, that move there? No. Yeah, I just, yeah. Not at all. Nope, not enough. Too vertical? Not enough flattening, I should say. Be, be specific, Cameron. <laughs> too vertical? Yep, too vertical. Okay. Excellent. 
Excellent. Good. On this next one, same feel through the backswing. Okay. Give me the rehearsal that we were doing together where your head's on the wall. Okay. You move over the top of the golf ball, you exit more left and let the leg release. Same backswing, good. Let the leg release, right knee through. Yeah, beautiful, okay. Nice job, Toad. Mm. One more driver. We're gonna close out here with an iron. Yeah, excellent job. Excellent job. That was pretty good there. Mm -hmm. You passed the movement test. You passed the understanding test. Let's try and pass the recollection test. So I know that when you leave, when you walk out this door, in your mind are the pieces that relate to you hitting better golf shots. So let's reverse. So we're gonna flip the classroom. Okay. You're the teacher, now I'm the student. Tell me what you're doing. Tell me what you need to do different and why. Uh, I was moving too too off the ball, like at the start, takeaway, even like almost before takeaway even. Mm -hmm. So I gotta try to keep myself a little more centered and feel like I'm just kind of rotating off of just one spot, mm -hmm. at least feeling wise. Yep, feeling wise. I gotta feel like I'm rolling over my, my forearms significantly kind of early on. Mm -hmm. And that should, in effect, be showing up in like the middle of my swing. Correct. Flatten out the, the shaft angle there. Yep. And then I gotta try to feel like I'm kind of moving, I guess, towards the ball, at least like leaning into, I guess, the wall, like you said. Correct, to offset head. your to normal offset behavior, which is back that way. Leaning back this way, and right. obviously swinging left. Good. Kind of get that path left. Awesome. And all of those things equate or stack the deck in favor of you being able to launch a ball left and yeah. have it move back to the right and not yeah. strike it off the toe. Yeah. Cool, what yeah. questions do you have? You've asked a lot. You've asked all the proper questions as well. I think, I think that's it. I mean, I was concerned about the shoulder tilting a little bit at the top. You mm -hmm. didn't really think anything of that. I do see what you're saying with being in a better position at the top so that I don't have to reroute as much. Mm -hmm. um, that gives me some comfort with that too. I just got to keep working on it, I think. Cool. Let's get, get better at that new movement. Awesome. Yeah. Nice Thanks, to meet you. Thanks, Cameron. Appreciate shoulder. it. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed me kind of taking you guys along on my lesson with Cameron McCormick. I definitely felt a little bit of a different feeling through the ball, so I'm, I'm, it's definitely promising. Obviously, there's going to be a decent amount of bad shots in there just because, I don't know, I feel like people expect to get lessons and get better like instantly, and I don't really see it that way. I think if you get instantly better through a lesson, you just got some BS like Band-Aid fixes that work instantly, and it's not really actually fixing the problem. And so I think if you get a lesson, you should be kind of prepared to hit it bad for a while because it's going to be a new movement that you're not really used to doing so yeah it's gonna be something i'll be working on here in the coming weeks and months and just kind of get that new swing move dialed in but as always guys if you guys have made it all the way to the end of the video make sure you give me a like it really helps me out when you guys do that if you're not subscribed already make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell and i'll see y'all in the next one Hey guys, if you're wanting my help to improve your golf, I put everything I know into my two programs here. In this one, I show you everything that you need to see in your swing in order to be a good ball striker. And if you don't see these things, I show you how to fix it. And in this one, I show you the course management knowledge that elite level players use to play good golf. And these are the things that I wish I knew a long time ago. If you want more information, check out the links in the description below. Also, if you'd like to help support me and my journey, it'd be awesome to have you as one of my patrons where you get access to a private group where I do live streams after my tournament rounds, have exclusive content for patrons only, and even do the occasional giveaway with signed putter head covers. Information about that is also in the description below.